Hi, this is Troy Hunt, and today we're looking at making requests to the Have I Been Pwned API. We're going to work through some of the information on the official API documentation page, which you can find via the API link up there in the navbar. To begin with, let's talk about authorization. When you make an authorized request to a Have I Been Pwned API, you pass an HIBP API dash key request header. Now this key is available once you have a paid subscription, and that's something you can take out via the dashboard link at the top of the website. But we do also have a test API key available, which makes it easy for you to test how the API works without needing to take out a subscription at all. The test key is simply all zeros. And when you use that key, you can call certain APIs with test data. It's not going to return any real live data, but it will allow us to start using the API and building our code in a fashion that consumes it. So let's do this. I'm going to copy both the name of the header and the key onto my clipboard. And we'll come back and use that in just a moment. Before that, I'm going to go back up to the top of the page and have a look at the API for getting all breaches for an account. Now this is one of the most popular APIs in Have I Been Pwned, as it allows you to pass an email address and retrieve a list of the data breaches that it has appeared in. Now, as we can see from the documentation here, it's just a simple get request to a path that passes the account and also passes that HIBP API key in the request header. There's a lot of different ways that people consume the Have I Been Pwned APIs. And that ranges from different technology stacks through to different third-party products. But one of the simplest ways to demonstrate consuming the API is just by using curl. So let's do that now from the command prompt. I'm going to type in curl, and then we're going to add the capital H parameter for header, and encapsulate it in double quotes, paste in the hibp-api-key header name, and the value being all those zeros we saw earlier for the test key. Now we're going to specify the path that we're going to send the request to. So I'm just going to copy it from the docs here and paste it back into my curl command. The final part of this request is to specify the account that we'd like to search have I been pwned for. And along with the test key, we have a whole bunch of test accounts. So I'm going to flick back to the documentation for a moment. And then up here in the index, you'll see a link through to test accounts. Now what we've tried to do here is create a range of different accounts that demonstrate different scenarios that an email address might experience when it's in one or more data breaches. All of these aliases that you see here exist on the Have I Been Pwned test domain. And that domain is hibp-integration-tests.com. So everything you see on the left side of the screen at that domain will return a result matching the description here on the right-hand side of the screen. We're going to do the easiest thing possible and copy the account-exists alias, paste it into my command line, and then just before we type the at, because we're passing it in the URL, we really should URL encode it. So I'm going to put a percentage 40 here, which is the correct URL encoding for passing that at, and then flick back to the website and copy that domain. And that's it. That's the entire request to the API. Let's give it a run. The result that comes back is a JSON body containing the name of each data breach that email address has appeared in. Now this particular one has just appeared in the one data breach, the one that has a name of Adobe. But where email addresses appear in multiple breaches, that JSON response can be a lot larger and contain the names of many different breaches. And you'll see all that fully documented on that section in the API page that we were just on. So that's successfully calling the API. Let's look at just one more thing and that's the HTTP response code that comes back from a query like this. 
We're going to see that by adding the dash i parameter to return all the response headers. And when I run this command again, we can see that the response code was HTTP 200. And that's a pretty predictable code for a successful response. Now we can see all the other response headers beneath that response code. And a little bit further down, we also see the response body, which of course is identical to before. This email address has been in the one data breach, which was Adobe. Let's now see what happens when we try searching for an email address that is not in any data breaches. So I'm just going to change that alias to account does not exist. What we see this time is HTTP 404 not found. And this is the semantically correct HTTP response code for when a resource doesn't exist. That email address has not been in a data breach, hence the 404 response code. Further, if we look down beneath that list of response headers, this time we do not have a JSON response body or any response body at all for that matter. So that's two different response codes, a 200 and a 404. I want to show one more response code. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to copy and paste another curl command into the command line here. This one has a legitimate API key. And don't worry, I'm going to change that straight after this demo. I'm going to run the search. And then I'm going to run it again immediately afterwards. And this time, I see an HTTP 429, too many requests. The breached account search feature of Have I Been Pwned is rate limited. And depending on the size of the subscription you've taken out, your rate limit will differ. I've just tested a key that allows 10 requests per minute. And we implement that by allowing one request every six seconds. Because I did that second search only a couple of seconds after the first search, I exceeded the rate limit and received the HTTP 429 response. As well as that response code, you'll see that there's a response header called retry after, and it has a value of four. This is telling me that I need to wait another four seconds before making the next request because I've made too many requests too fast. It's important to avoid exceeding the rate limit. And if you do it consistently enough, you may be put on a longer timeout. If you need to make requests faster than your current limit, you can always upgrade your subscription to a higher tier. Not all Have I Been Pwned APIs are rate limited, but for the ones that are, do keep an eye on that HTTP response code and keep within that prescribed limit. Now again, how you query the API may well differ to this. You might be doing it with Python or C Sharp or any number of other server-side programming languages. Or you might even be pulling it into a desktop product like Microsoft Excel. There's lots and lots of different ways of consuming APIs via various clients. But regardless, the fundamentals remain the same and most importantly, the underlying HTTP requests all communicate to the Have I Been Pwned API in the fashion we've just demonstrated with curl. And that's it. That's breached account searches with the API in Have I Been Pwned.